From Commando.com, welcome to the Tech Refresh Podcast, where we scour the internet, feature the digital news, gadgets, and stories to keep you up to date. Our promise, give us about 30 minutes, and we'll make sure you're the in-the-know person and the digital source for your friends and family. After an exhaustive nationwide search to find the right digitally savvy show hosts, they gave up, and you got me. I'm Mike James, along with Ali Seligman, our Commando content queen. How did I do, Ali? Nailed it, Mike. Well All done. All right. And uh, Ben Obi-Wan Bradley is with us. I'm, I'm even impressed by that. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't count on it for next week. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, we've got a ton of stuff to get to, as is every week. Scam of the week. Stimulus payments out. And stimulus scams are up again. A few minutes. Allie has uh, email templates. Brand new or not true. I believe Ben has the extremely good uh, products this week. Is that correct? Oh, that is very much the case. <laughs> okay. I'd it's going to be, it's going to be a big challenge every time Ben's has products and uh, streaming services. Are they good, bad, best, worst? Uh, how does that work out? We're going to talk about that. We're going to start with the news and I, I'm sure everybody's kind of getting ready to do some traveling as soon as uh, the, as soon as the COVID as we're behind COVID, but a warning before you start searching, Allie. Oh. Yes. So as the vaccine rolls out, people are thinking about all that vacation time they missed last year, right? So right now, about 21% of the U.S. population has at least one dose. 11% of people are fully vaccinated. These numbers are going to be outdated very soon because about 2.4 million doses are being doled out every single day. So as people are getting vaccinated, searches for terms like fully vaccinated travel are jumping an astronomical amount, a 750% increase last week. Uh, CDC guidelines for travel off the charts. As always, find something people are searching for online and scammers are there waiting to take advantage. They are targeting travelers through fake websites that are spoofed versions of official government sites. So like the ones you'd go to check on Global Entry, TSA PreCheck, Nexus, all those kinds, they're all under the, the federal government's umbrella called Trusted Traveler Programs. Okay, at the worst, these sites are complete scams and people are just trying to steal your information and your money. The next step up, they offer to take care of the registration process for you for a fee, whether or not they actually do it, kind of a coin flip. And then there are sites that will actually process this for you, but they charge you a fee. Don't pay that. Do it yourself. It's not actually that difficult. Okay, now, how do you spot the real sites from the fakes? Well, your biggest tip off. The real government sites will end in .gov. Anything else, any .com, any .anything is not the site you want to be on. Make sure to look for the secure link, so HTTPS. And if you do buy anything online, even this stuff, use your credit card. That way, if there's a problem, you can dispute the charge. Of course, we've said it again. We'll say it a million times. Gift cards and wire transfers, don't use them. If you are asked to use one of those on a government site, it's not a government site. I have another way to tell if you're on a fake site. What is it? If it's if it's uh, logistical, if it makes sense and it's easy to do, is probably a scam because government <laughs> sites they just they can't do it that way. <laughs> Good point, Mike. Are you guys right. thinking about going anywhere? Do you have any? Um, you know, a little more distant, but are you thinking you're dreaming of your next trip? Okay. Well, yes. I mean, I love going to the Grand Canyon. We have friends in Las Vegas and. Well, we live just north of Phoenix, so those are within driving range. But as far as getting on a plane again, yeah. I mean, one of my favorite places is like Cape Cod uh, up in New England, just off of Massachusetts. Just beautiful, just quiet area. That's uh, somewhere I'd love to go again soon. Now that you mention it, I think I want to go to Cape Cod, too. That sounds pretty nice. <laughs> no, anywhere, any plane, anywhere. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I am looking forward to it. It's been a long, long time. All right, Ben, Chrome's incognito mode isn't uh, quite as uh, under the radar as we thought, right? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's Google being Google. So a class action lawsuit filed against Google is moving forward, and it all deals with private browsing. You know, there's always been that big question mark surrounding Google's incognito mode asking, you know, just how private it really is. Well, the simple answer that we've long known is that, you know, it, the private browsing mode on Google won't save your browsing history it won't save cookies, information you enter in online forms, but you're not invisible to your, you know, your internet service provider or the sites you visit, maybe not even your employer. Now, what we didn't know is that apparently Google doesn't stop tracking you in private browsing mode either. 
And it's that part that led to the filing of this class action lawsuit uh, in June Cal- in California last year. So three people filed this lawsuit, and they're alleging that Google still, you know, they quietly harvest all kinds of your data while you're browsing in incognito mode, even when data collection in Chrome has been disabled. Now, even worse, the lawsuit says Google still tracks you if you're browsing in private mode using other popular browsers like Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Apple Safari. Now, of course, Google's parent company, Alphabet, tried to get this suit tossed by pointing out the fine print that clearly states websites might be able to collect information about your browsing activity during an incognito session. But, you know, failing to mention that it's Google that's collecting that information and that it's not just a might collect info. Well, a U.S. district judge felt that wasn't a good enough answer either, and last week ruled that the class action lawsuit can move forward. And it's a big one. It's looking for $5 billion. Wow. And, yeah, but, you know, it's <laughs> cases like this that they've been known to drag on, so don't expect any major developments soon, although we'll be keeping an eye out. So in, like, five years, we can all get our $5 from Google? <laughs> right. It's <laughs> yeah. Five. It's three. It's a check for $3.29. Up to $5. Yeah. <laughs> up, to, up to $5, yeah. The Pentagon's research agency just opened a bid for jetpacks for special forces. Wow, that's cool. What's that all about? Yeah. You know, here on Tech Refresh, we always like to focus on stories that will impact you, things that you want to know about right now so you can protect yourself or use some new feature in your tech. This is not one of those stories. But it was too cool not to share. All right. The U.S. Department of Defense, through the Pentagon's R&D hub, just opened up research for new military technologies involving air mobility systems. Translation there is jetpacks. They're putting up $1.5 million in development costs to vendors who can make flying soldiers a reality. It's not just jetpacks. They're looking at a variety of flying outfits, powered gliders, powered wingsuits, powered parafolds that could eventually include... This is a quote, computer-assisted control functions and intuitive interfaces. If you're picturing Iron Man, I am too, and you should be. That's what it sounds like. (laughs) (laughs) Now, these can't just function. They have to function how they want them to, right? So these things need to work, but they also need to work in a certain way. They want them to work such that assembly and deployment can occur in less than 10 minutes using only simple tools or no tools at all. Uh, the platforms must not require assistance from external equipment. I think this is superheroes. I think the government's trying to create superheroes. What do you guys think? So it's like Iron Man with no Jarvis, though. So you can't have Jarvis helping you out. Is that what it's saying? No outside? Or- Although could eventually include computer-assisted control functions, I think is an intuitive interfaces. I think it's, you know, no external, you know, somebody who needs to be manning something. AI, I don't know. That might be on the table. I mean, I'm all about that. Government or not, just like jetpacks forever. I'll sign up for it like a cyber truck, you know, just put it on the waiting list. And <laughs> Yeah. The, well, you know, there's been some leaks uh, on YouTube of jetpacks, and they really have developed in the last couple of years. The problem is, is they can't, they, they can get, you know, really, really high, really, really fast and go really fast, but they can't go for very long. Mm-hmm. So now I suppose with uh, all the technology and lithium ion batteries, maybe they'll become electric jetpacks or uh, maybe even, you know, get the get those things to last at least like 30 or 40 minutes till they're actually, you know, usable, viable. Make you know, sure products. to get you to Walmart. Yeah. Walmart <laughs> and back with some groceries. That's all I want. All right. Uh We're going to take a deep dive today into streaming services, what we like, what we don't like, what are the good ones, the bad ones. Also this week, we've got the scam of the week, the stimulus payments are coming, the third round of stimulus, and of course, related scams to stimulus. We'll talk about that. Brand new or not true is just ahead from Tech Refresh on Commando.com. We're back on the Tech Refresh podcast from Commander.com, and later on, we're going to tell you about a uh, little rock that, well, could hold clues to the formation of the solar system, and it landed in somebody's driveway. More on that later. Before we get to brand new or not true, we have a quick tip we want to share with you. Allie's got email templates, and oh, how useful they must be. Oh, they are. So sometimes when I'm thinking about tips, whether it's for Commander.com, for this podcast, I think about things that we are using and that we're doing. Now, we are hiring at Commando, and 
Let me tell you, if you've ever hired somebody, you know it takes a lot of effort, a lot of outreach. And I found myself writing the same email over and over to reach out to candidates. And then I had a little brain flash of, why don't I just make a template? I'm going to give directions for Gmail because that's what we use here. And it's super simple. So go into your settings and you're going to go to advanced settings and you need to enable templates. Don't worry if you need the steps. We have it on commando.com. Just search Gmail templates and you'll see. But then uh, start a new email. Write everything. You can put the subject line, the full content, uh, even attachments. And then go to the bottom and you're going to click the little three dots in the right corner And then when you roll over, a tab will pop up that says more options. Click on it, click the templates menu, and you can save it. And then from then on, when you open up a new email draft, you can click those same three buttons and insert your template. It's so easy, and it saves me so much time every week. I love it, too. I've got about 10 templates, and I use several every single, probably uh, eight or nine of them every single week. Use it a few times a week. It's, It's handy, yeah. All right. Thank you, Allie. It's time now for America's newest national game show sensation where you can play and guess, is it brand new or not true? Every week, literally thousands of new products, sites, apps, and services are announced in the technology world. Some destined for greatness, others not so much. Oftentimes, the products sound crazy, outlandish, and ridiculous, so you sit back and think, what were they thinking? Before you know it, tech just created a new millionaire. But when playing brand new or not true, we're going to present you, the home listener, with three products, sites, or ideas. It's up to you to decide which two of the three are real. And we ask you to be honest. Do not go to the Internet and look up the answer. None of us are. Not even me, after I lose week after week (laughs) after week. No, um, uh, anyway, again, two of the three are real, and one of the three is fake. Ben's got the products. Go, Ben. Okay. Food is the theme. Okay. And I think it's been the theme a lot, but you know what? If it works, and I think I'm often hungry when I'm writing these, so, you know. (laughs) All right. So, you know, what's better than something right off the grill? Great, right? I mean, just the, oh, it's awesome. But, you know, grills are a little messier. They take a little more, you know, they're they're just a little harder to to maintain than, than your average kitchen stuff. So... One product can help maintain that, though, the GrillBot, the automatic grill cleaning robot. You know, so forget about scraping the grates. Just put the little GrillBot on the grill, hit the start button, and there it goes. It's like a robot for your floors, except this one has a grill brush instead of a vacuum. (laughs) It has three electric motors and even the most caked-on grills powered by a... Oh, for even the most caked-on grills, and it's powered by a CPU chip that controls movement, speed, and direction. It'll even notify you when it's finished cleaning the grill. Uh, the grill bot is powered by a rechargeable lithium-ion battery, and the brushes are removable and dishwasher safe. And they can be pre-ordered right now for $89.95. How does it uh, notify you when it's done? Is it a Bluetooth? Uh, no, it makes sound. Like, okay. It, like, Got it. Loud, audible beeping. Okay. All right. Are you hungry yet? <laughs> Should we talk Just add about- lunch. I'm good. <laughs> Should we talk about dessert? Because uh, maybe you look like uh, you want to play with your food a little bit because how about some candy? You know, you might think of Polaroid as, you know, the company for its nostalgic cameras, but they're also jumping into the world of 3D printing, the tasty kind. So think of this as a 3D pen filled with melted candy that you can use to draw. Basically, you draw out your favorite shape of candy onto a flat surface. Just fl- just plug the pen in, give it a couple minutes to preheat the candy, And you're all set. Choose from different candy cartridges like strawberry, grape, lemon, and then draw your snack until your heart's content. Even multi-layered creations. Uh, The best part is, at least from a health standpoint, is that the candy is sugar-free. Now, the Polaroid Candy Play 3D pen costs about 50 bucks, but think of it as a printer that needs refills. A pack of 40 additional candy cartridges will cost you 30 bucks. Okay, how much? 50 for the pen. 50 bucks for the pen and 30 bucks for the cartridge. Yes, for a pack of 40, correct. 40 cartons. Got it. Got it. Next product. All right. Now, this one is more for your kitchen counter. So, you know, you've got your gas ovens, you've got your electric ovens, confec- convection, microwave. But a new product doesn't use heat, at least not in the traditional way. It cooks with sound waves. At least that's the promise of the Soundwave Oven Pro, brought to you by the makers of the new wave oven. So instead of typical heating elements... 
This oven cooks using sound waves that can't be detected by human ears or your pets. Just put anything in for meat or vegetables, then set the intensity and the timer. The benefit is faster cooking and a cover that's cool to the touch, similar to how a microwave oven cooks, but without removing all the moisture and hardening what you're trying to cook. Again, sound waves, so it probably gets a little loud inside the chamber, but it's airtight so none escapes, and it shuts off the second you open it. Now, the Soundwave Oven Pro can be ordered now through a special New Wave on TV offer, three payments of $39.95 each. And it comes with a rotisserie cage for your first order. <laughs> Set it and forget it. All right, so here is the question. Just one question. Is Ben devious enough <laughs> to put in the Polaroid Candy Play 3D pin because it just seems so completely outrageous uh, to make candy. Ben, I'm going to say yes, you are devious enough to do that and evil, Dr. <laughs> evil. Um, so I'm going to say the grill bot for $89.95, uh, that seems like a real product. Now, everybody, just, just so you know, you can turn your grill on really hot and just let it sit there for an hour and it'll clean itself like a self-cleaning oven. But the grill bot is pretty brilliant, and I'm sure somebody would buy it for 90 bucks. Oh, what a great gift for Dad on Father's Day. So uh, I'm going to say that's real, and then I'm also going to say the Soundwave Oven Pro. Eh, it seems a little bit uh, far-fetched, faster cooking through sound waves, but uh, everybody's looking for that next big new thing. 120 bucks. boy, that seems cheap for something like that. Uh, but I'm going to say that's that's real, too. And I'm going to go with the can Polaroid Candy Play 3D pin is fake. <laughs> and, uh, OK, go ahead, Hallie. I want the grill bot. If that's real, I'd like to get one of those because I hate cleaning the grill. OK. Oh, my only concern with this 3D pen is hot sugar seems like a burn hazard. I can just see some kid with their Polaroid pen burning their fingertips so that oh yeah is, that's what gives me pause because sugar does need to be pretty dang hot to melt hmm oh this is tough because i also think the uh sound wave oven pro is fake okay you know what no i'm gonna say the pen is the fake part okay we both say the pen all right let's start with the grill bot ben we both said that's a real product is the grill bot, like a Roomba for your grill, he is very much real. <laughs> now it's actually it's actually been around for quite a few years. It's just I said pre-order because the third generation comes out in a few months. Uh huh. So it's the third generation of the grill bot. Okay, so we both uh, we both got the can. Okay, let's at, see if the Soundwave Oven Pro is a real product. Soundwave Oven Pro. It makes all kinds of noise to cook your food. I made all kinds of noise just making that up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, you think you can yell at your food to cook it? Probably not now that. that I think about it. <laughs> now, I will say it's not that it's like completely far-fetched. There has actually been work on that to try to use, a, to use sound waves to, and I'm trying to remember, in certain parts of the world, they've, they've tried to, where energy is lacking and things like that to convert it, but it's, it's really large contraptions and, and engineering beyond what I can comprehend. It's certainly not anything that you're going to be able to, you know, fit in your trunk or on your kitchen counter. <laughs> and it's, it's not even widespread. So, but uh, yeah, the, your, uh, your Polaroid candy pen and Allie, like I said, you missed the detail about it being sugar free. Oh. oh, dang it. <laughs> <sighs> Very real. Now you can only get it, uh, it's like one site that's being sold at exclusively. Uh, I forget the name of the site, but it's in it's in the UK. But I believe dumbcandy.co.uk. <laughs> <laughs> How about the polar? Is it is it made from the old Polaroid company, or is this is another company that happens to be called Polaroid? Oh, it's the same company. The oh, same okay. Company. So, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, you should see it. if you look at the some of the demo stuff. Like they made like a multi layer. It, it's like. Like a rose made out of candy. And it's like, why would I even want to eat that? I just want to like put it in a glass case or something, you know. Just... <laughs> All right, Ben, good job. Uh, you fooled us both. And that's it for this week's edition of Brand New or Not True. 
Uh, up next, we're going to take a deep dive. You know that Netflix actually just came out and said that you can't share passwords anymore. So we're going to take a look at streaming services, the good, the bad, the ugly. Also, the scam of the week. More stimulus checks coming, more scams coming. And later on, a rock in a driveway could hold clues to the formation of the solar system. All on Tech Refresh from Commando.com. Welcome back to Tech Refresh from Commando.com. Every week we give you the inside scoop on what's going on in tech so you're in the know and the source of digital information for your friends and family. Every week about this time we take an in-depth look into issues that affect the technology lifestyle. And this week, well, we've all heard that Netflix stopped everybody from sharing their passwords with their family and their friends and their grandma and grandpa um <laughs> too bad so we're going to take a look into uh into um streaming services ally yeah if you haven't seen that yet so they're testing this now if you log into your netflix account you might get a little pop up that says essentially asks you to verify your account and so you have to they're doing this to prove that you live with the person that owns the account if you don't well, you can pony up and start paying for your own. So I know lots of people who are collectively saying like, dang it, that's another almost 20 bucks a month. I don't want to spend that. Is it it's, that much? It's in the high teens, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, it's, if, you want the, if you want the 4K option with, uh, I think, at least three streams, simultaneous streams, then yeah, you're looking at, uh, it's a little more. Wow. Yeah, it's like okay. 18 bucks or something. So far and away, Netflix is the leader and has been for a long time in you know this kind of streaming. As of uh, the last quarter of 2020, 203 million subscribers globally, 73 million here in the U.S. And then who's number two? We know Netflix is the big leader, but for a while it was a bunch of companies kind of vying for, was it Hulu? Was it Amazon Prime? Well, then Disney Plus came out, and that has done just sensational numbers, um, certainly fueled by the pandemic. Uh, the signups there are crazy. And they're predicting that by 2024, they'll have between 300 and 350 million uh, combined subscribers with their Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN. So Netflix, they're coming for you. Then we get to the conversation of what's number three? What's next on the list? Okay, in the streaming world? HBO Max, my guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a good one. That's certainly in the in the contender. So in streaming, 50 million is kind of the number for once you get there, you're in the conversation. Before that, eh, not really. So there are lots that are close to that 50. Um, Peacock is at 33 million already. HBO, that is at 37. Hulu's at 40. Paramount Plus, they're pretty new. So you might know that as CBS All Access. But if we take the new Paramount Plus combined with Showtime, because they're one, uh, that's 19.2 million. So we've got all these streaming services, and there's lots more we haven't talked about. But first, let's quickly, do you guys have Netflix? Yes. No. No. Have you ever had Netflix, Mike? Yes. I actually had a, a card expire uh, on my automatic renewal for Netflix, and um, I didn't notice that I was – actually, I probably started getting emails, you know, but I really did – that that it was – you know, I, they, they needed a new card. Right. But I was like, well, I don't really use that very much anymore. Six months later, I was like, okay, I guess I can unsubscribe to Netflix because I just didn't use it. Yeah. Yeah, I got rid of it last year because – my new philosophy is if we're not watching anything on it right now, I'm just going to get rid of it. You know, uh -huh. I'm not I'm not a like passive TV watcher. We don't just turn on TV and have it on. Um, right. And so, you know, that's not our default. Let's go find something to stream. I can hear you probably all just heard Ben <laughs> sigh because times I feel like I don't even know you. <laughs> <laughs> You've got them all, don't you, Ben? You've got like every streaming service. Kind of. I mean. But, you know, you say passively watching. It's like, now I'll passively watch sports. So we'll be streaming something. I'll have passively, you know, games on on the two TVs that flank the, the, <laughs> the main TV. I'll be kind of watching those just with the sound down. So, but, but yeah, it's like Netflix we have. We've had for a few years. Um, the water cooler shows, you know, it's like, now I'm not going to watch The Queen's Gambit. I'm not going to watch it. I don't care. And then two weeks later, I'm watching The Queen's Gambit. <laughs> you know, same thing at Bridgerton. That's not even anything. A week later. We're watching Bridgerton, you know, it's just, <laughs> so it, it makes it easy. And that's, you know, with Disney, of course, I mean, we love, you know, I love Star Wars and the Marvel movies. So do my kids. So we've got that. We've got, you know, the 
all of that. Apple TV Plus has some good stuff. Uh, all, all my Star Trek is on CBS All Access, <laughs> which is now Paramount Plus. So, yeah, it's basically cable again, just in Internet form. Yeah. And do you have you ever added up your bill from all the different streaming services? <laughs> I'm not no. <laughs> well, no. Okay. But some of it's like, okay, yeah, we pay for Netflix and Hulu, but uh, I don't have active bills like, uh, did, well, let's see, AT&T, or no, 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 uh, Apple TV Plus, I still have free because they keep extending it from when I bought the iPhone 11 back in 2019. I think that expires in June now. Uh, when HBO, or no, when Disney Plus first hit in late 2019, they had some kind of crazy promo, you know, if you pay three years in advance, it's only this much. So yeah, we did that. And so we're still riding that wave without a monthly bill. Um, and then Prime that, Video, we we already subscribed to Prime, so again. That's a really good point, and that's a good way to save money. You might not realize that you have a way to get some of these things free. Um, like if you have T-Mobile, T-Mobile gives free Netflix which with a bunch of their plans, so that's a bunch of savings right there. Um, a lot of them, too, you can – not a lot of them, but some of them you can bundle, so that can always save you a little bit of money. But if you haven't done that, check with your – your phone provider, especially, they have some good partnerships where you can get one of the services free. Our new thing is if we're not actively watching something, get rid of it. And then we just wait until there's enough we want to watch on there that we'll just get it for, you know, a month or two and cancel it. One that I think we will keep for a while is Disney Plus. One of our big, you know, hey, we're bored. What are we what are we doing? <laughs> uh, weekend things has been rewatching all the Marvel movies on Disney Plus. So we're through all those, but now, of course, they have all those new shows coming to get suckers like me who are so invested in this world. So, Yes, by the time one. you're listening to this, we have the first episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier that just dropped. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, for me, I, I, just, uh, I just, I use Amazon Prime as, my, as a streaming service, you know, and I, now that I think about it, uh, I got Netflix just because of Breaking Bad. I just wanted to see Breaking Bad. Everybody was talking about it back in the day. So it's the Tech Refresh podcast. One of the things we promise every week is to keep you posted on what's going on with the digital lifestyle. And that includes keeping you up to date on getting scams. So every week we talk about a new scam that you need to watch out for. New stimulus checks are on the way, as well as new scams to take advantage of those new stimulus checks. Go ahead. So, yeah, another round of stimulus payments, this time of up to 1400 bucks, are on the way. Now, if you have direct deposit, you might have already seen that money hit your account. Well, you know, scammers keep track of these developments, too. And that means you need to watch out for the various ways they're going to, once again, try to trick you out of your own money. It can be in the form of a phone call, a text message, an email, or a DM through one of your social media accounts. And now the FTC has seen quite a few variations of it. Uh, I'll kind of give you a range of them. So, you know, someone will get in contact with you claiming to be with the government, saying that you need to pay a fee up front to secure your stimulus payment, or that this fee that you're paying will expedite uh, how fast it'll arrive. Now, they might even threaten you over back taxes or, you know, some other made-up story. Now, whatever the case, they'll ask you to fill out a form or rattle off sensitive info like your social security number, your bank account info, credit card numbers, whatever. Don't fall for it. Now, the easiest way to spot these scammers is when they ask you to pay through, you know, a wire transfer, Bitcoin, or, and this one is my favorite, gift cards. I'm going to say this one more time to be clear. No government representative, local, state, federal, no reputable company, no Hold on, I'm, don't go so fast. I'm writing this down. Wait a minute. Organization, you, whoever, will re ever require payment <laughs> in the form of iTunes gift cards. <laughs> Wait, this you don't pay for happen. everything with iTunes gift cards? iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down, Mike. iTunes gift Yeah, okay, got it. Got it? Got it? Yeah. Okay. Nobody's yeah. going to ask you to pay for that way. Nobody, nobody reputable is going to ask you to pay that way. If, you know, if you're eligible for, for the stimulus, uh, it should arrive without any action on your part. You can track the status through the, you, using the Get My Payment tool on the IRS site. And if you have a question about it, it's not arriving, you can contact the IRS through their site as well. But, you know, they're not going to reach out to you about it that way, especially. Oh, drives me crazy. Gift I just had to scares. sign on to the IRS site the other day, and I was surprising how easy it was. It's irs.gov. It takes about five minutes, and you're in. 
Even if you have to change your password, which I did, because I <laughs> couldn't remember. Yeah. Anyway, uh, coming up next, we've got a rock lens in a driveway, and how could that hold clues to the formation of the solar system? That's next. We're just answering the little questions here <laughs> uh, on Tech Refresh from Commando.com. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tech Refresh podcast, heard exclusively on Kim Commando Explains podcast from Commando.com. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button so you get this podcast delivered automatically every Friday. That also gets you the special feature podcast, including this week, about the right to repair. We take a look at companies like Apple and even John Deere who are making their products so you can't repair them, you can't fix them yourself, you have to go back. It's much more expensive. We talked to Gay Gordon Byrne, who's an expert in this area. We also talked to a farmer about his tractors and how he can't fix them anymore. It's a fascinating podcast. Again, that's on the Kim Commando Explains podcast. All right, a rock lands in a driveway. Uh, The formation, how that has to do anything about the formation of the solar system. Yeah, well, you know, we've all been there. We're sitting there minding our business and (laughs) something weird hits our driveway, you know. Is sure. that just me? That not, okay. Oh. That was another. My my neighbor crashed his drone again. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Well, it's something you don't hear every day. A woman and her parents, they're hanging out at their house over in the UK. It's uh, one night late last month, and she hears this strange sound coming from the front yard. It's kind of like this weird thumping noise. Look out the window. It's dark. You know, figures, eh, it's nothing. Well, the next day they go out, and there's like, it, it's some kind of blackened splatter on the driveway. Now, at first, they're thinking, okay, someone dumped their charcoal grill over in our driveway. Or maybe neighborhood kids were throwing lumps of coal at houses. Maybe that's a thing over there. I don't know. But anyway, neither of those things really happened. Uh, Turns out, you know, they had experts come out. It was actually a meteorite, specifically. And I know I'm just going to completely mess up how this is, how you say this, but a carbonaceous... Chondrite. Anyway, wow. Yeah. Pretty good. According to the BBC, that's a material that retains unaltered chemistry from the formation of the solar system some 4.6 billion years ago. So basically, you have this major scientific discovery that could provide more insight on the formation of planets. And it just came through the atmosphere in the form of a fireball and fell on this family's driveway. Now, here's the kicker this is the most valuable apparently the the most valuable rock from space that's ever hit great britain but instead of trying to profit from it the family has already decided to donate it to the natural history museum in london for study in a find that could keep scientists busy for years i'd sell it how much is it worth <laughs> you know, it's not an nft so you're not going to make anything right now uh yeah when you were listing off the stuff it could have been, my first thought was aliens. So, you know, maybe yeah. maybe the truth is out there. Yeah, yeah it's, like an alien. Yeah, like a, call it an alien. I'd sell it. Terrestrial form of uh, <laughs> a fuel that just like fell off the ship. If you'd like to comment about the podcast, good or bad, mostly good, send us an email to podcasts at commander.com. Again, that's podcasts, plural, at commander.com. On behalf of Ali and Ben, I'm Mike. We'll see you next time. And for the latest digital news articles anytime, go to commando.com with a K. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O. Are you struggling to lose weight and keep it off? Tired of wasting time and money on starvation diets that lead to more frustration and stress? If there was a weight loss solution that could actually work for you, would you try it? Then head to golo.com. I'm Steve. I lost 138 pounds in nine months on Golo. I'm Amber. I've lost 128 pounds with Golo taking release. If you're ready to take back control of your life, head to golo.com now and see how Golo can work for you. That's G-O-L-O.com. My sleep is way better. My inflammation has gone way down. 
Golo saved my life. I was way overweight. That's what sent me down the path. I wanted to make sure and live for my kid. I have literally tried everything. I was on the verge of getting gastric bypass surgery, and I saw the Golo commercial, and it was the last thing I tried because it worked. Join over 2 million people who have found a better way to lose weight with Golo. Your healthier and happier life begins at Golo.com. That's G-O-L-O.com. Again, G-O-L-O.com. Before Shopify, were you wondering, where my sales at? Now you're selling with Shopify, the global commerce platform supercharging your selling. You have no problem selling online, in person, on social media, and beyond. Gary, easy on the cha-ching. <clears throat> oh, sorry, but my Shopify sales are through the roof. Start selling with Shopify today and discover how millions of businesses around the world use Shopify to ignite their selling. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com listen. Shopify.com listen.